Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for teaching us the word, strengthening us, leading us in the things of God. Now again, our hearts and our minds are open. To hear and receive your word. We receive it gladly with faith and meekness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, who was here that attended the last one last year? Give them a big hand. That's good. You're all very welcome. You know, we thought that we should have some special times where we can come together like this and share the word, you know, open the scriptures, learn God's word, share the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Get ourselves stayed for the future, programmed for the things that God wants to do with our lives, and be prepared for success. I got started when I was very young, before I was nine years old. And so I know the value of beginning your life early in the things of God. There are a whole lot of people who don't know anything about God until they're old. And when they find out, they feel so bad. They wish they had known much earlier. But they've wasted so much so much time on everything else without knowing anything about God. For so long, they thought it was just a myth, only to find out it was real. But they were now so old, not much time to do all they would have loved to do for Jesus Christ. But if you start early, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. It's important to start early. What you're going to be in life doesn't start when you're old. It starts when you're young. How successful you're going to be in any field. The programming starts when you're young. This is very special for several reasons. You know, most of you are in school in one level or the other, and you're training to be a doctor, an engineer, uh, an architect, a lawyer, a politician. You're training for so many different things. But none of these schools has the capacity to train you to be a successful person. They may make you a successful banker, a successful lawyer you know you can be a successful lawyer but not a successful person because you can be a great sportsman but not a great person because being successful in any field is very different from being a fulfilled person 
who can help others fulfill their dreams in life. You become a success by helping other people become a success. So today I'll only give you just five important points to be a success for Jesus. All right? To be a success for him. You want to be a success. You see, you're smart. You came all the way to listen, to participate in this youth camp. You're not a fool. You're smart. You wouldn't travel all the way to listen to a fool, would you? I'm a success. So, you came to listen to someone who's successful because you're smart. So, I want to show you how to be a success for Jesus Christ. You can be a success. We're changing nations today. We're impacting nations. We're impacting nations by the millions. But there are important things. To make that happen. Number one. Choose to win. It's a choice you make. You choose to win. Choose to win. That's number one. Choose to win. Let nothing stop you. When you choose to win. Nothing in the world. Is designed to stop you. Nothing. The first thing, the first thing is to make that decision, make that choice. You realize not everybody chooses to win. Some people just go through life without thinking about winning. They just hope things will turn out right. They just hope I'll be lucky. You know, they say, well, if I'm lucky, lucky? No. Don't wait for luck. No, don't wait for luck. Don't wait for that. Oh, so if you're lucky, you'll be fine. If you're not lucky, then trouble. So, that doesn't sound like what God will want for us. But for many people, that's what they think. That if you're lucky, fine. If you're not lucky, then too bad. <laughs> what I found out in the Bible was that God wanted us to choose. He wanted us to choose. And the beautiful thing is, He shows us the options and shows us what's better and tells us to choose what's better. Have you written it down? Yes. Choose. Choose to win. Choose to win. It's the same. In our exams in school, you can choose to win. If you don't choose to win, a choice has been made anyhow. You see that? If you don't choose, don't say, well, I may not choose to win, but I, I just won't choose anything. No. If you don't choose to win, you have chosen to fail. You know that the world is, uh, the world's got more poor people than rich people, is that correct? It's got more suffering people than people who are sound and prosperous, right? Okay. Where do you want to be in life? What, what, what side of the street do you want to live? <laughs> if you're not prosperous, you can't help anybody else. Do you want to help others? Yes. Then you better be prosperous. Only prosperous people can help others. Let me show you something. Can I get um, two people? Both of you come. Take your chair.
Yeah, come up here. Both of you sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Help her stand up. Help her stand up. Don't, don't do anything. Just, just remain there. Help her stand up. You know why? Okay. Now, you get up. Help her stand up. Watch. Okay, stop. Thank you. She was going to do it, right? Yeah. Now, you know why? Down people can't help down people. You see, only up people can help down people come up. So if you're down, you can help others that are down. You've got to be up to help the other guy who's down come up where you are. So you've got to go up. We're helping a lot of people today, feeding a lot of poor people, sending many people to school, giving out scholarships, all right? Helping communities have pipe-borne water, all right? Building schools in different communities. We're doing this. How, why can we do it? If we were in their shoes, we couldn't do nothing. But we're able to do this because we've been lifted by God to a higher platform so that we can help others. But if we chose to remain on the ground, we'd never be able to do anything. There are too many poor people in the world Somebody's got to help. The government can't do everything. Somebody's got to do something. And if you think, well, I can't do anything, then you can't do anything. But if you say, Lord, I would like to help, then he'll show you how to do it. You get it? Thank you. Thank you. You're wonderful. Thank you. So you got to choose to win. You make the choice. You make the choice. You make the choice. We're holding large meetings where these stadia around the world that were built for football games and, and the rest of them and athletics. Years ago, when I was a, a, a student in school, I looked at some of them and I said, I said, they're not, they're not built for sports. They're built for Jesus Christ. I said, I'm going to fill the stadium with people and have people come in there to hear the word of God. But I was just a kid. So I wouldn't have been taken very seriously. <laughs> They would have thought, oh, he's just talking. But I wasn't just talking. It was a vision. And I set my focus on that vision. I said it was going to happen. And it's happening today. That's why I said it's important that you start your life early. You start now. You start now. I was preaching in the schools. I preached in the schools. And God takes you from one step to another. You just don't stop. And I went on and on and on. So, let me show you this. I told you, you gotta make a choice, okay? Turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter number 30. Verse 19. You'd see the importance of making the choice. The options are given to us. Clearly. Have you seen it? 
Deuteronomy chapter chapter what? And verse Okay, read. You see that? He gave them the options. It is I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, he says, choose life. He didn't say, choose whichever one. <laughs> Even though the options were clear. But he guided them. He said, choose life. So, choose to win. Alright? Choose to win. If you choose to win, nothing is powerful enough to stop you. Because nothing has had the sense enough to determine that they're going to stop you. No, they don't have the power. Choose to win. So that's number one. Choose to win. Number two, hook up to Christ. When you choose to win, you get plugged in. Hook up to Christ. Hook up to his wisdom. Hook up to his power. Hook up to his inspiration. That means he'll make you wise. He'll give you the power. He'll inspire you. So when you choose to win, you hook up to the source. Hook up to the source. There are people who choose to win, but they're not plugged in. You see, they're not hooked up to Christ. And so they can't win. So that's number two. Hook up to Christ. If you're born again and you've received the Holy Spirit, you're hooked up. You're plugged in. Amen. You're plugged in and ready to go. So you say, hook up to Christ. Hook up to His wisdom. Hook up to his power, hook up to his inspiration, his wisdom, his power, his inspiration. So you see, he makes me wise. So I'm smart. I'm wise. He fills me with power. I've got ability. I can do anything. And thirdly, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I'm stirred. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. All right. So, you've taken number two, right? Number three, learn his language. Number one, choose to win. Number two, hook up to Christ. Number three, learn his language. Learn his language. You see, he talks differently. Jesus talks differently. You gotta learn his language so you can talk like him. Learn his language. Study his words. Learn his language. You, you write this down. His language of faith, hope, and love. He talks faith. He talks hope. He talks love. What's your language like? What's your communication like? You see, learn his language. The way Jesus talks. He talks faith. He talks hope. He talks love. He never talks ugly. He's not insultive. Never talk proud. No. But he talked faith. He talked hope. He talked love. Learn his language. Talk faith. Talk hope. Talk love. Never talk fear. 
Never talk failure. If you listen to the news today, it's like the whole world is in a mess, right? I mean, every day you listen, and there's something going wrong. <laughs> it looks like everything's just going to go bad. But no, cheer up. Them guys out there may have messed things up, but that's why God's given you wisdom to fix it. You realize, even if you had difficulty with your academic work in school, when you say, I choose to win, you will win. Say, I choose to win. Say, I can see my future already. Nothing is too good for me. I choose to win. Say this, I believe in my future. See, I always tell the young people, I believe in your future. But you see, they've got to believe in their future too. Say, I believe in my future. Say, my future is bright. Yes. So number three, learn his language. His language of faith, hope, and love. Wow. These are the three greatest principles in the world. And the greatest of them is love. Faith, hope, love. Always talk faith. Always talk hope. Always talk love. So, number one, choose to win. Number two, hook up to Christ. Number three, learn his language. And number four, go for him. Go for him. You know what that means? Everywhere I go, I'm his representative. When I show up, Jesus shows up. Because I come in his name. See, he represents me. You remember, Jesus ascended to heaven. So now, he's in heaven, in the presence of the Father. The only reason we say, Christ is in me, is because the Holy Spirit brings his presence into my life. Because I receive the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is just like Jesus. He brings the presence of the Father and the presence of Jesus into our lives. So we relate and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay? But Jesus himself is in heaven. What is he doing in heaven? He represents me before the Father. And so I represent him in the earth. I represent him before men. He represents me before the Father and the angels in heaven. So he's there for me. I'm here for him. It's a partnership. So that's why we say, number four, go for him. So I'm on the go. Always, I'm on the go for Jesus. So that changes everything. That changes everything. Because even when you're in school, you are a student with a difference. Right? Yeah. You say, I'm a student with a difference. So you're going to say, I'm a young man or I'm a young woman with a difference. Yeah, because you see, you have the most sublime, the most authentic relationship, identity that this world has ever known. Your identity with Christ. It makes you fearless, absolutely fearless, because he says, I am with you always. Fear not, I am with you always. So, I'm never afraid, 
because he's with me when i was a little boy i was full of fear i was afraid of everything because i heard too many bad stories if you listen to bad stories you become afraid so i was very very full of fear but when i received the holy spirit my fears dissipated my fears were gone i couldn't find my fears anymore i lost my fears because the holy spirit came into me with the boldness of god in my spirit i have no fears anymore and all those years i lost my fears amazing that's what Christ does for you you have no fear of anything because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world hallelujah okay so Go for him, number four. Go for him. You're going in his stead. Go for him. Tell somebody, go for him. Go for him. Yeah. I'm out for him. You're out for him, right? Yes. Yeah, that's it. You're his ambassador. You're his representative. You're authorized by Christ. You're commissioned by Christ. And he is with you. And in you. Praise the Lord. So, number, number five should be easy. I told you the five points. What do you think number five should be? I mean, uh, look at it. Number one is choose to win. That's number one. Number two, hook up to Christ. Number three, learn his language. Number four, go for him. What do you think the last one ought to be? Win for him. So I go and I win. So I've got that mentality. Everything I get involved in, I'm a success. I win all the time. Say that to yourself. Say, I win all the time. I win all the time. You see, that's what Christ has made of you. He's made masters of us. We're not failures. We're victors. Amen. So I'm a victor. Everywhere I go, I'm a victor. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. Someone might, might just look at you and try to rage you. And tell you, you can do nothing. No, I can do all things through Christ. I'm full of power. When you speak, God makes it happen. See, when I speak, God makes it happen. See, how does he do it? Through the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Remember the Holy Spirit is God. You see it? That's what makes it so different for us. From. Religions. In religion. They try to reach out. To God. They try to please a God. But they don't know. What's on his mind. In religion, they can't be sure what's on his mind. They hope to please him. In Christianity, we know what's on his mind. He sent his son to die for us. That means he loves us. That means he cares for us. In the religions of the world, they're not sure of that. They're not sure of that. There's no religion in the world where... They can tell you that they are loved. No, it's all judgment. 
They can think of being loved. Religion doesn't have value for people. And so those who think Christianity is a religion also think that way. They're wrong. But in Christianity, there's value for people. Because Jesus proved it. He proved that we were valuable to God by giving his life. Hey, you know the value of a thing by how much you paid for it. You get it? What, what's your bag what? What's your bag what? Maybe it's worth $50. That means that's the value. That means you were ready to part with $50 to get the bag. So that's the value of your bag. Right? If you bought a, a motorbike, maybe $2,000, $30,000, 100,000 rand. That's the value. Right? For us, Jesus gave his own life to prove to us that God loved us as much as he loved Jesus. God values us as much as he valued Jesus. So to God, we already know our value by how much was given for our salvation. It was Jesus Christ. God gave him up to die for our salvation. That means God thinks I'm important. God thinks I'm important. If God thinks I'm important, I should think I'm important. Hey, are you important? You ever hear somebody say, oh, don't mind him, he thinks he's important. <laughs> well, you haven't found me yet. <laughs> I don't only think I'm important, I know I am. Because I'm a child of God. Jesus died for me. I must be important. He's no fool. Only a fool will pay something for nothing. I can't think I'm nothing. Because he paid so dearly for me. I'm something. I'm special. I know my value. You know your value? You're special. Hallelujah. So when you pray, don't pray like someone who's trying to get something from God. Oh God, please, if you would just do this for me. No, he already did the best for you. Nothing could be better than Jesus. Nothing's too good for you. Remember it. Nothing is too good for you. You know why many people don't have miracles happening in their lives? You know why many people don't have answers to their prayers? Because they don't truly pray. They don't pray with expectation. They just talk. You want to see great things in your life? Be bold to ask him. If you talk with him, he'll respond. He's a living God. He'll respond to you. Hallelujah. Say I'm a success. So I can see my future already. Nothing is too good for me. I choose to win. You realize even if you had difficulty with your academic work in school, when you say I choose to win, you will win. Say I choose to win. I've made a choice. And it is to win. Notice we started with the choice to win and we ended with winning.